Chandrayaan 3 takes the lunar temperature. A new report finds massive gender bias in Australian high school curriculum. And landslides on Mars indicate water surrounded Olympus Mons many, many years ago. It's Wednesday, August 30, 2023. This is the science and space news you need to know now. Celebrating 20 years of Trekzone, this is Trekzone's Talk and Science. It's been a busy week since India's successful landing in the southern pole of the moon. Chandrayaan-3 has gotten straight to work, not only deploying rover Pragyan, which will explore the cratered surface, but the probe has harnessed integrated cameras to send back videos of its surroundings, as well as completing research objectives already for the planned two-week stay. We also have the first readings back from the Shasti experiment, Shangra's surface thermophysical experiment, which uses a temperature probe and 10 sensors to measure the temperature of the South Pole's soil. At a depth of 80 millimetres, the temperature recorded was minus 10 degrees Celsius, rising quickly through this topsoil as the sensors reached the surface. This initial finding, which requires further analysis, shows lunar regolith could be a powerful insulator. A new report has revealed the Australian high school curriculum has a gender bias when it comes to teaching children about scientists and scientific discoveries. The study was conducted as part of the Include Her movement and analysed the curriculum of four STEM subjects, biology, chemistry, physics and environmental science, and revealed that only three states in Australia uh, even mention a female scientist in their literature. Associate Lecturer and Science Communicator at the Curtin University Node of the International Centre for Radio Astronomy Research, Dr Catherine Ross, beams into Trexone this week to discuss her report published in the Australian Journal of Education on Monday. I began our chat by noting that this finding is incredibly alarming. I think this is a result of a long-term unconscious bias when it comes to science education and science at large. I think there's been a really long history of undervaluing the work that women have done, not just in science, but more broadly. And as a result, we see science education favouring the contributions of men and propagating this lone male genius narrative that science was done by an individual who had a major discovery in isolation. And it's just, frankly, an incorrect narrative to have. And it overlooks all the contributions that women have made and continue to make in science. And in the case of teamwork, male researchers and scientists are more likely to receive the accolades as well. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we see so much res uh, so much research that shows authors where the uh, sorry papers where the lead author was a male get far more citations. We see men getting far more grants. But when we create these uh, anonymous applications, women start to perform as good as men. So the biases are there. When we see the male scientists, we inherently assume that they are better or that their work is of a higher standard when that's just not the case at all. And I think this curriculum reflects that. It puts the work done by men on a pedestal and then overshadows the women who have contributed and the work that women are doing. And we can also look to history as well, that this is, as you say, has been ingrained in us. Uh, it's been the way that it's been. Uh, we can look at the manned space program that NASA had in the 60s. Uh, you know, they've taken the strides forward now. It's now crewed missions into space, which is great. Uh, and obviously, I'm at a little bit of a disadvantage um, in talking about this topic, so I defer to your judgment, of course. Uh, it's not obfuscating uh, the male point of view, and there are some that are doing fantastic fantastic work, um, but equally, there's a lot of women out there that are doing some amazing work. I see it here on Talking Science all the time. That's exactly it. And I don't think this report shows that the men should be excluded. I think that that's not a good way to approach this research. It's simply looking at what we're currently teaching and the way that we're teaching it and seeing if that benefits all students. And at the moment, it's not. So there's 145 scientists that are mentioned across Australia and only one of them is a woman. That's not representative of how science is done and it's not really helpful to any students. You're essentially telling women if they want to be a scientist, if they want to do excellent science, their career ends at high school. There's no future for them in that career. But what's perhaps more concerning as well for all students is across all of Australia, every single state, 
all the science subjects, not one Australian is mentioned anywhere. So we're seeing this narrative that only good science is done by men and it's only done outside of uh, outside of Australia. That is a really concerning narrative to be telling our high school students when they're at such a critical stage of deciding what career to pursue and whether they want to pursue a science career. We'll catch my full chat with Dr. Ross by clicking the card in the top of the YouTube video. Or if you're listening to us on a podcast, jump on to trekzone.org and click the links through to catch that one. Well, what happens in femtoseconds in nature can now be observed in milliseconds in the lab. Using a trapped ion quantum computer, the research team at the University of Sydney achieved something never done before. They witnessed the interference pattern of a single atom caused by a conical intersection. Now, conical intersections are known throughout chemistry and are vital to rapid photochemical processes such as light harvesting in human vision or photosynthesis. Joint lead author Dr. Christoph Valahu from the School of Physics said, until now, we have been unable to directly observe the dynamics of geometric phase. It happens too fast to probe experimentally. Smart cookies. New evidence suggests an ancient Martian ocean girt Olympus Mons, which played an important role in landmark streaks on the planet's surface. Researchers studying images taken by the high-resolution stereo camera on board ESA's Mars Express in January revealed the new insights hot on the heels of similar geological evidence found in July of gigantic cliffs surrounding the largest mountain in the solar system. The escarpments are thought to delineate an ancient shoreline inside of which lies a large depression where liquid water probably once flowed. These new findings support the idea and suggest the lower part of the mountain crumbled when ice and water at its base become unstable upon encountering the lava released from Olympus Mons. Transastra, a Los Angeles-based space company, has been awarded an $850,000 NASA early stage contract to tackle the space junk problem. This is the second NASA contract for the startup based off its inflatable capture bags technology. That first grant was to develop a method of snagging an asteroid or space rock. Now they're setting their sights on low Earth orbit based on what they learned earlier. Now, while asteroids can fling off pebbles and other hazardous to spacecraft materials, so too can space junk. But it's all still early stages with concepts still being drafted for how the Worker Bee mission would operate. Well, 12 years after Hubble snapped a visible light image of M51, James Webb has dazzled us with infrared snaps of this amazing spiral galaxy. Images released August 29 show the galaxy 27 million light years away in a contest with its dwarf galaxy neighbour. M51 is considered a grand design galaxy because of its strongly defined spirals and easily identifiable core region, with the European Space Agency noting it is one one of the most photogenic for amateur and professional astronomy. New Aussie analysis of an old meteorite from the Sahara Desert suggests that a radioactive chemical known as aluminium-26 may not be as reliable for dating meteorites as previously thought. That's because it's now believed that uh, the material is unevenly distributed throughout the solar system, with the Australian researchers using long-lasting radioactive lead within the meteorite, named ERG Check 002 to determine it was around 4.566 billion years old. They then compared the amount of aluminium-26 in the meteorite with others from a similar time and found that this Sahara Desert discovery was higher in aluminium-26 than the other samples. Fascinating stuff. Plenty of exciting uh, news this week. We are podcasting on YouTube and across every podcast app. Find each of Trekzone's shows on Google or Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, tuned in, and more. Plus, Trekzone's channel in the iTunes library gives you a one-stop shop for all of our goodness. So jump onto your favorite podcast app, find Trekzone, and subscribe. And of course, not forgetting the Trekzone channel on YouTube, where we've always been for 10 years, still going nice and strong. Speaking of YouTube, a membership continues to be available. Early access to podcasts and behind the scenes for less than a cup of coffee per month and of course our facebook and instagram feeds always have the week's podcast highlights this is our 20th year to the world we are trekzone i am matt miller going boldly since 2003